Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial series in which we will be making a multiplayer online battle arena also known as a MOBA I haven't pre-planned the number of episodes of this uh, tutorial series however I will try posting as frequently as possible Before we move on to the tutorial I want to talk to you about my game which is a restaurant tycoon type of game it features beautiful graphics and uh, a lot of decisions to make as a manager of the restaurant. If you are a fan of this type of game, please add it to your wish lists. I recently created a Steam page for it. You can find the link in the description. Thanks a lot. We are going to start off by making a new project. It's going to be a blueprint project. We're, going, we're not going to modify any of the settings here. And let's call it something like MOBA Tutorial. Hit Create. And let's wait for the project to load up. Nice. So first of all, we're going to create a new uh, level. It's going to be a basic level, hit create, and let's save this level. So let's create a new folder inside content called levels. And this level is going to be called main. Save. And let's add uh, some boxes, some cubes to the level just uh, so we can uh, test the navigation later. So, just a couple of levels, just a couple of uh, boxes, scaled, rotated. Something like this. Should be enough and that's about it so inside content here I'm going to create I'm going to create a new blueprint class it's going to be it's going to inherit from the game mode base let's just call it um, no we want to call it main game mode Let's go to world settings. Let's uh, override the uh, game mode override here. So I'm going to select the main game mode that we just created. And we're going to set the default pawn to none. So that's it with that. Now we're going to create a new folder called um, blueprints inside blueprints we're going to create a new blueprint class it is going to inherit from actor and call it bp underscore camera let's open up our camera and let's give it a child of spring arm So, this spring arm is going to have a child of camera. And that should be about it. So, the reason why we're putting it off with a spring arm is because it's going to be easier to zoom in and zoom in later with the, the target arm length. It's also, it's also useful to have a spring arm because the spring arm will go will help us uh, detect collisions with the meshes and adjust the camera so we can always have a view of, of the point so that's it with the camera now let's grab it put it inside the inside our level
take it up in the z-axis like this and let's give it a rotation around the y-axis of minus 45 and around the z-axis minus 30 so you can always you can always modify these values to your liking but I think that this isometric feel is going to work uh, is going to work for now so one issue is that when we create uh, when we click on play here it's not going to use uh, the camera that we just put that's because we need to set it in the blueprints so let's go back to BP camera here <clears throat> inside event graph let's take this here so I'm going to create a new node called view target from blend so if it doesn't show up just uh, uncheck this this checkbox and here it is set view target with blend inside target it's going to be get player controller so let's say get player controller and inside new view new view target it's going to be a reference to our, uh, our blueprint so let's say reference get a reference to self compile let's try it. let's try it now and it works nice so now we are going to uh, create our hero or champion blueprint so I'm going to create a new blueprint inherit from character BP champion let's go to our champion blueprint let's give it some sort of visual representation so I'm going to add a new component of sphere I'm going to click on the sphere here and I'm going to scale it up just a bit like this now inside the blueprint of our champion we're going to actually go far further away from here and we are going to create a new event add custom event and we're going to call it move to position so the reason why I'm creating a new event here is because I'm not going to handle the input inside our champion blueprint and that's because in Unreal Engine blueprints that inherit from uh, the from the pawn class do not accept input in any way shape or form I don't know why but that's, uh, that's how it works so you cannot uh, use uh, inputs inside a uh, blueprint that inherits from a pawn unless of course it's uh, the possessed pawn but that's uh, something else so I'm going to grab a new pin here from uh, from our new event that we just created and I'm going to call it or I'm going to uh, look for uh, line trace by channel so we're going to cast array cast that's going to detect the position that uh, was selected by the uh, the player and uh, our champion is going to go there so our raycast or uh, line trace is going to have a starting position which is the mouse position converted to world position and the end position is going to be the end of uh, or uh, the the direction of our line trace so I'm going to get player controller controller and I'm going to say convert 
mouse location towards space. This is going to give us the mouse position in world space just as we need it. So I'm going to take the world location and put it in start. And for the end, we need the direction, but we need to elongate it a little bit. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by a float. So click here, convert to float. And I'm going to say 10,000. So we multiply it our direction by a thousand now we are going to add it to the location to the initial location so we're going to add them together and this is going to give us the end point of our line trace and we're going to put it here so now after i uh, got hit I'm going to break it up, so say break hit the result. And let's take the location here and I'm going to say promote to variable. Let's put the pin here and let's create a new node and it's going to be a move AI move to I think. I move to. So the pawn is going to be a reference to self. Get a reference to self. And the destination is going to be the location that we just got. So that's it for uh, this blueprint. Let's. Uh, go back to our level and we need to actually go to open level blueprint here and uh, we're going to spawn our champion on begin play so let's say spawn actor from class and that class is going to be bp champion So I need to give it a spawn location and a rotation. So I'm going to create a new variable here, call it init location. And it's going to be a transform. Let's get it. And let's break the transform. So break transform. Or actually, I'm doing this wrong actually. No, I'm not going to spawn actor BP. I'm going to spawn AI from class because our uh, our champion needs to move around using uh, navigation and this is the best option for that, uh, for that scenario. So I'm going to say BP champion and we're going to grab our location again break it up and put the location and the rotation in here so let's get our return value here and i'm going to say promote to variable one last thing i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to uh, make sure that our mouse cursor shows up uh, on the screen when we try to play the game so we're going to say show set show cursor again if it doesn't show up just uncheck this uh, checkbox and i'm going to check show mouse cursor now for the actual input Another thing is, uh, I forgot to rename this variable, so it's, it needs to be called champion. 
so we spawn our champion and we put it in a variable and the reason for it is this so we're going to get it here and uh, we're also going to get right mouse button and we're going to say champion cast to bp champion i'm going to put the pressed pin there and as bp champion i'm going to call the event that we uh, created earlier so it's going to be move to position I think this should work now. Maybe we modify the uh, default value of our transform, but not here. So it seems that we have an error. Yep. Our target needs to be get player controller. Make sure that this is checked again. Get player controller. And let's compile. Let's go back to our game and let's run it. So our player spawned in that position, which is 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to attempt to click on the screen. Of course, it's not, go it's not going to work because I forgot to uh, create nav mesh bounce volume. So I'm going to put it at zero, 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 and let's scale it up on the x-axis, so 40, 40 on the x-axis, and uh, 40 on the y-axis, and on the z-axis, let's say um, 5. Now our nav mesh begin, begins to generate as uh, you saw here. If we want to visualize it, we can press P on the keyboard. And that is going to give us a visualization of our, uh, of our nav mesh. Now let's click play and try it again. Great. Now when we try to click somewhere on the screen, our player moves to the desired position. So next up, uh, we're going to get the camera logic behavior. So we want our camera to move around when we hit the bounds of the screen and we want to zoom in and zoom out also. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.